You're listening to Sweep the League. Hey, this is George Iceman Gerber, and you're listening to Sweet the League Radio. All right, everybody, welcome back to Sweep the League. It is the uh, Manic Monday edition of Sweep the League. It's going to be myself and Coach Geo. We're going to be breaking down the SEC for all you college football guys out there. We're going to break that down for you here. We only are with you guys for an hour. Also, the replay is at 9 o'clock tonight, so don't forget about that. The replay tonight at 9 o'clock is not live. Uh, it's going to be a rebroadcast of the show, so you can catch it then as well. Hit up our YouTube. Go to YouTube at Sweep the League TV. Uh, let's get the party started here. The first segment is brought to you by MCS General Contracting. Let's bring in Coach Gio here. Coach, you ready for? I love. I love the Dio. Is that a sweater or what is that? A jacket? Pullover? What is that? It's the uh, Georgia Bulldog sweater, Rudy. Oh, I know it's a Georgia Bulldog. I can clearly see it's not Grambling State University. I know that. It's you know no. Not all rambling, but um, yeah, yeah, it's the uh, Georgia Bulldogs. One of their sweaters uh, my girlfriend picked up uh, like last year. Could be there you year. go. We had breaking news just right now. Uh, the Washington Commanders just named Jaden Daniels their n- number one quarterback. So, uh, what a surprise, Rudy. No, I mean, really, it's not a surprise. You're being the top, when well, you're a top pick on them. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, also, that Bo Nix, man, been pressing. This weekend preseason, so I know I've been making fun of his age. You know, he was in college for about fifteen years, give or take. But <laughs> Bo's been playing pretty well. You know, we'll see what happens the start of the season. Of course, we're still in preseason, but he's playing well. Yeah, we're gonna do some NFL talk this weekend. This week, actually, so we'll save that for this week as far as the NFL. And I know Gio's dying to get me on my Daniel Jones take, but we'll save that for NFL and Caleb Williams. Apparently, apparently Caleb Williams is just you know the man, right? Apparently, so I guess, but. Nonetheless, we're going to get into some SEC talk. First things brought to you by MCS General Contracting. So SEC, dude, the we're going to do conference by conference breakdowns for NFL talk preview. We're going to do division by division breakdowns. So the SEC, obviously the two top teams. Actually, I'm not even going to say the two top teams. The three top teams we're looking at are Georgia, Texas, and Alabama. Now, this is one of the conferences. It's not going to be the most exciting conference. It's going to be the most physical conference. It's going to be the overall best conference. I think the most exciting conference is probably going to end up being the Big 12 when it's all said and done. Uh, but the most competitive conference is definitely going to be the SEC. I had three, possibly four teams make it into the college football playoffs. The three obvious ones for me are Alabama, Texas, and Georgia. The other team that I had that could be in there is LSU is one of them that could be a sleeper. Also, um, Ole Miss is another one that could be a sleeper. I don't really like Missouri or anybody like that anymore. Tennessee, I'm not really on the board with Tennessee right now. But who do you got going into college football? Let's get that out of the way right now in the playoffs. Do you have three guarantees or do you actually have a fourth that could get in? Um, Because the fourth one for me is still not a guarantee yet. No, it's probably going to be three. So we got Georgia and Texas, Rudy. I think we both agree those are going to be the, the two teams that get in. Now, Ole Miss and Alabama, that that to me is a tough one. Look, new head coach in Alabama, Rudy, first year. Don't know what we're going to get. Obviously, they're a talented football team, and they're going to take care of business in most of their games. But I'm going to go with, right now, three teams, Rudy. Georgia, Texas. I'm going to go with Alabama but Ole Miss, their schedule, Rudy, if you look at Ole Miss's schedule, is very favorable um, for most of the year. They're not having what Georgia has to play, and in some cases, even Texas. So Ole Miss, right now, um, the betting has them at uh, nine and a half for SEC wins. I'm going to go over for Ole Miss. I mean, they do have a random game against Wake Forest, but Rudy, they got Kentucky, South Carolina. Look, I get it. LSU is going to be a tough game um, at their place. Oklahoma, Arkansas, Florida, Mississippi State. Um, Ole Miss could definitely squeak in for a fourth team, Rudy. But right now I'm going to go with three with Ole Miss sitting right there. Now some surprise teams. I mean, look, Auburn, LSU, you you always have to look out for those teams because it's one of those things from year to year you can have a breakout team Uh, Now, I'm not talking about Kentucky or LSU or um, Vanderbilt, but I do like Missouri, Rudy. You know, they beat Ohio State 
for what it was with what team they had left um, in that bowl game last season. But I, I like the Tigers. They've given Georgia a fight the last few seasons. So Missouri, don't forget about Mizzou. They got a I program that's building Missouri there. has enough this year. I, I I know they're a team you don't forget about. I, I, I know that. But it just doesn't seem like they've got enough this season to be one of those teams to look out for. That, that that's just my take on the Missouri on the Missouri talk. It's I have them above, you know, like I have them above a Florida. I have them above an OS, uh, Ohio. I'm not Ohio, uh, Oklahoma State. I mean, not Oklahoma. State, I'm sorry, Oklahoma. I've got them above a few of these other teams. I just don't know if I can be the type of guy that says, "Okay, watch out for Missouri." I don't think they're going to be there. I think they're probably. I have them maybe fit their fifth at the highest in the SEC. That's just me. I have maybe no higher than five. I mean, Rudy, they they returned Brady Cook. I mean, they they got they got weapons. I I think that's the team you're sleeping on. But and I don't think you're sleeping on them. I just think you're kind of trying to narrow down that college football playoff. But I really like Missouri a lot. I've seen them obviously play. I I think they got a good shot. They got a favorable schedule. Um, Early on, I mean, Rudy, they went eleven and two last season. That, that that's kind of means something. It means something. I mean, we took we were taking a look at Ole Miss's schedule real quick. Um, you know, the, the, obviously they're going to have a tough they're going to have a tough uh, couple of games there. I mean, like we were mentioning, they start off with Furman, Middle Tennessee State, Wake Forest, Georgia Southern, Kentucky. For Ole Miss, those should be wins. I would think they should start off at least five and zero oh on the season. Then they go to South Carolina. Now, South Carolina is not a game that you can definitely just say, okay, that's a win. It, everything always seems to happen in South Carolina. But after that, it's LSU, Oklahoma, and then you travel to Arkansas before heading up Georgia. That That's a tough road for Ole Miss, in my opinion. And I think that's kind of why I have them out of you know contention for any type of college football playoff. I mean... Fair assessment on the old Miss talk right there that that's probably the reason why because that brutal schedule at the end of the year is probably going to catch up to them. It's possible, Rudy. I mean, look, Georgia's schedule we all know is going to be a pretty tough one. Uh, but I liked what they had the quarterback position there and uh, was it Jackson Dart? Um, yeah. A pretty good offense last season. Ole Miss didn't play well against Georgia. A lot of teams in the last several years haven't fared well against the Dogs. But I like Kiffin in this spot to kind of rally the ship. Obviously, look, those sleeper games, Arkansas, Kentucky, Rudy, anything's possible, right? We see that even in the Big Ten. Yeah. Don't sleep on those teams. And listen, I, I know Vanderbilt's probably going to be a, a team that no one's looking at, but I think they can make some noise in the SEC. Van, man, Vanderbilt's another team, but again, these are teams that I don't really see doing too much. Like, are, are, are we basically just judging them on base of what they've done in the past from the SEC, you know, because sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're mediocre. Sometimes they're just not quite all there. Is it just always that we have that fear of them being one of the teams that just surprises in the SEC? That's why we talk about Missouri. That's why we talk about Vanderbilt. That That's the problem. I, have. I think the SEC is a lot top. It's a lot more top heavy this season than any other season that we've seen in past years. Yeah, I mean, look, we, we know the teams that are at the bottom. They've been there for quite some time. Sometimes they jock for position, Vanderbilt. Vanny's been a team where they, man, right, just can't seem to have a stretch. But really, it's hard in the SEC, right? You have those top dogs being up, uh, up top. And Vanderbilt, Kentucky, I feel like really a program that's headed in the right direction. And you have those teams heading the right direction, but it's tough having to play. Now, obviously, with no divisions, Rudy, right? Mm -hmm. There's no more divisions in the SEC and even in the Big Ten. Um, so, you know, hopefully scheduling-wise, some of these teams could could be able to have a little bit more flexibility yeah. in scheduling. But Vanderbilt, Kentucky, you know, they're they're towards the bottom. Texas and and that's another team, Rudy. Just a few years ago, Rudy, top five recruiting class, you know, oh, Jimbo have the boys ready to go, and what happened? I'm pretty sure they lost four <laughs> or five games as he normally does, and he's out at Texas A&M. So it's tough sledding. I think you're right, though. I think the Big 12 is probably going to be more entertaining, and 
in some cases, even the uh, the Big Ten will probably be in some cases more entertaining than the SEC because you're going to just kind of have these these physical matches where the bottom teams are not necessarily maybe can upset. Yeah, that's the mo- that's the thing with the SEC. It's going to be a battleground for a lot of the better teams. Now, I mean, I, we both have. Remember, there's 12 teams going in. You're going to have majority of the teams coming in from SEC, Big Ten, Big Twelve. We're going to have some in there. You're going to get one of these other teams. Like we mentioned a couple of shows back, we were talking about, um, you know, a team like Memphis getting in. Where I said, you know, to me, if UTSA runs the table with the only loss being against Texas, UTSA needs to get in there in the college football playoffs as a twelve. But do you think that they can run the table, Rudy? Uh, we can. We're going to cover that conference. We're going to cover the uh, the yeah. et cetera conference. And I don't know if it's other ones. because I'm hearing the name UTSA and I'm kind of trying my hardest to say, sure, I, I think Trail's a great coach. What is he still doing uh, at that school, Rudy? I, I don't necessarily know. It's commitment, he could be it's he, commitment. he could be holding off for a good job, Rudy. You know, maybe he wants to uh, well, get one of those SEC jobs that probably won't well, open funny. up this year, but... It's funny you say that because I've I've gone on record as just saying the one job he's holding out for is 35 North up in Austin. I think it's that Texas Longhorn job. I mean, he's got so many ties to Texas that, I mean, that that would be the perfect place for him to go is to the University of Texas. Start leaving? I, I not right now. No, I mean, is Archie Manning and the kind of the weights there, Rudy? I don't see t- I don't see uh, Sark leaving, but. Consider this. Last year was a great opportunity for Sark to get to, you know, to get a national title, at least into the national title game. But this season, it's one of those, you know, you got five feathers on a duck before he goes bald. This year is one of those other feathers that if you don't get it done, we're going to start plucking it away again. I think Sark is not on the hot seat. But it's warm. It's warm. I, I, I think that's a fair assessment to Sark at Texas right now. It's warm. Well, it, if they have a disappointment, like if they win, let's say they win four games, do you think it gets super hot at the end of the year where they're like, hey, this guy's got to go? If they win four games this year? Yeah. He's fired. <laughs> how, how do you have one of the best and most talented teams in the country I mean, high aspirations. You're, you have most, not most, but you have a lot of people picking them to win the SEC. Finishing no worse than third in the SEC. No worse than third. If you only win four games, the guy's gone. I mean, Gio, if he can only manage, you know, two wins in the first X number of games, the guy's got to go. You, you, you are if they lose to Michigan, right? Because they play Michigan, right, this season? Then the seat's hot. The seat's burning. Yeah, if they lose to Michigan, and then, I mean, listen, we've seen teams start high, Rudy, and sometimes get out of control. But, Mm -hmm. yeah, I I think he's fine. Trailing going there, it's it's real possible. We'll see what happens in the next few years because, look, R.G. Manning's waiting, Rudy, and that's kind of, you know, the boy wonder. He's the son of, obviously, the Manning family, and uh, that – for start to leave, unless he's probably going to get fired. I, I don't see him leaving on his own will. Rudy, uh, another team that I seem to laugh at in the SEC gives me joy as a big rival of them. We play a big game every year up there in Jacksonville, the neutral site game. The Gators, Rudy, well, what do you uh, see from Billy Napier? Because it's possible he's probably going to get fired because that their schedule actually yeah. is one of the toughest schedules in the country. And look, I like Graham Mertz a lot. Came onto the scene last season, but really the, the Gators schedule, if you could pull that up, yeah, give me man, I, I really don't see a scenario in which the Gators potentially even have a winning season. Well, here's the Gators schedule. So let's go over that. Before we go to a quick commercial break, here's the Gators schedule right here. So I'll bring it up to full screen so everybody can see yeah, it. play in Miami. I mean, you go to Miami first, and you got Sanford, then you got Texas A&M, which isn't a cakewalk, Texas A&M. Not for the Gators. It's not. 
Mississippi State. UCF is another team that's, Three, that's talked a about. big, a big game. I used to live in Orlando. I've really close by to UCF. That's a program that has been itching. And it, it could be their time to beat Florida. It's going to be a Big 12 SEC matchup. I give UCF a golden opportunity, Rudy, uh, to win that game. I know, and that's what I'm saying. UCF is another team that's being talked about because they are in the Big 12 um, as far as the, as far as the real, realignment goes. So, I mean, they're another team that people are potentially saying that they're going to come out of the Big 12. I mean, that's perfect right there um, for UCF because that's a huge game for both, both uh, programs right there. But then they go to Tennessee – Kentucky, and then they've got that brutal end of the season, dude. Gonzaga, I mean, Georgia, Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, Florida State. That is a potential five-game losing streak. And, Gio, it's not five-game losing streak. It is a potential blown out of the water. That's what I'm saying. Really losing and streak there. Look, they can lose to Miami. They can lose to Rudy, they may win three or four games the whole season. Their defense last year was atrocious, especially in SEC games. They gave up like 35 points a game. You know, they did bring Ron Roberts to come in to oversee the defense. But I, I really, I that end of the schedule, Rudy, I don't wish I don't even my worst enemy. <laughs> and yeah, no kidding. The Gators, they're treading water, Rudy. Because like I said, their easiest game is, is obviously Stanford. And who knows, Rudy, if they lose that game, they're going to be Appalachian clearly State, done. Michigan, huh? And then they go to Starksville at Mississippi State. I mean, at, they're at home against AM, and but AM is also ranked. Uh, Gators, I used to do this a lot on Facebook. Rest in peace, Gators, Rudy. Because they're not <laughs> getting out of this alive. They will not get out of this alive. No, and that's going to be a that's going to be a coaching gig that might even be available at the end of the year. Do you think that's a good job, Rudy? Uh, I say your drift trailer over there in UTSA. Mm. The Gators come to you and says, hey, because I do think, you know, this is a team that won back-to-back -back national championships with Urban Meyer. Um, they also won a, a, a national championship back in the old days with Steve Spurrier. I, I think this is a program that can get players. They can get, you know, they have the facilities. They have all that stuff there. I just think it's just win for the right man to kind of ride the ship. But I think it's a good job, Rudy. I, I really do think so. So, just throwing it out here before we go to commercial break here. Let's just throw this out there. Um, I mentioned trailer to, to Texas. So, if Sark was to be let go, fired, or leave, I think Sark would be a good fit for Florida. I don't see tech. I don't see trailer. I, I think trailer has... See, my thing is this. I think trailer has more pipeline connections through the Texas programs and everything. And I think Sark fits more, I guess, Florida bound. Cause I mean, Sark is, I mean, where's he been? He's been what USC, you know, now he's Texas. He's kind of been all over the map. So Wasn't I would he with think the Falcons for a while already uh, for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he's got connections all over, which is why I would think Sark makes more, uh, more sense for Florida. Now Florida might throw the bag at him and he may say, you know, peace out. But um, definitely, I, I think uh, I think that it's going to be trailer at UT. Uh, UT. I think that's what he's waiting for when it when it's all said and done. But when we come back, we're going to break down more of the SEC. The Rock is going to be joining us here back on Sweep the League. A uh, little reunion here as we go on. Coach Gio Rudy Campos Jr. Derek Irvin should be back tomorrow. Uh, again, we'll be back tomorrow at 9 p.m. for the regular time. But as of right now, we are doing this live. This will be a replay later on as well. So, uh, Coach Gio, Rudy Campos Jr., Rock will be on when we get back. A quick commercial break. Are you looking for a contracting company that gets the job done right the first time? Look no further than MCS General Contracting. MCS specializes in top quality concrete work, including patios, driveways, foundations, and swimming pools. The team of experts are dedicated to delivering exceptional results and unparalleled customer satisfaction. At MCS General Contracting, they're not just hardworking, they're local. Based in San Antonio, they are committed to building relationships and trust within the community. 
That's why MCS guarantees your satisfaction. They pride themselves on getting the job done right the first time, every time. So why wait? Contract MCS General Contracting today to schedule your project and experience the difference for yourself. MCS General Contracting. Building a better San Antonio, one project at a time. Proud sponsors of Sweep the League. Hey guys, are you ready for a flavor explosion? Look no further than La Casina Taco Truck. Serving up the best street tacos and quesadillas in New Braunfels. With a five-star rating and rave reviews, they're not just a taco truck. They are a taste sensation. La Casina staff is the best in town and pride themselves on making every customer feel like family. Whether you're feeding a crowd or just satisfying your own cravings, they've got you covered because no order is too big or too small for them there. Louie and his staff are all about customer satisfaction and they love their community. Don't worry, San Antonio friends. They're just a short trip away to New Braunfels. So why wait? Come visit La Cocina Taco Truck today and taste the difference for yourself. That's La Cocina Taco Truck, where every bite is a fiesta. Proud sponsors of Sweep the League. All right, welcome back to Sweep the League. Coach Gio, Rudy Campos Jr., we're going to be joined by The Rock here in just a second. We are covering some SEC football right now. Again, the replay is going to be tonight at 9 o'clock, so be sure to catch Sweep the League again tonight at 9 o'clock. This exact show, the uh, the SEC preview show, is going to be blasted uh, tonight at 9 o'clock on YouTube. So go to YouTube, search at Sweep the League TV, be a subscriber. We just gave away a copy of Madden 25 uh, this past Friday. We're doing more giveaways this week. Only for you to win is to be a subscriber. We got Amazon gift cards. We got a ton of other stuff. What do you got, Coach? Well, apparently, Rudy, we uh, there were a few people who said, "Is this real?" So you know, yeah, we, know. we we had to prove that. And uh, yes, we do know that happens. I'm pretty sure, Rudy. People give giveaways, and they actually never give anything out. But <laughs> we can send you screenshots. I can send you my bank account. So. Yes, we do give out uh, those giveaways. So Madden and NCAA, very successful giveaways. Thank you for everyone who followed. Definitely come join in on the uh, YouTube page as well on X, uh, which you speed Twitter. The next giveaway game-wise, I think NBA 2K, Rudy, I think that probably makes the most sense as NBA yeah. season uh, is not too far. And then we'll also do MLB The Show. Obviously, that game has already been out. Also, so. WWE. We're going to give away a copy of WWE. I'm in, I'm in yeah. for that. Since we yeah. do a little bit of a wrestling show, I'm in for that. There's no problem with that. But yeah, Gio can pull up the receipts. I can pull up the receipts. We, When we say we're giving away something, we're giving away something. And to yeah. be honest with you, I'm not going to be a bum about it and say, I'm just going to say it. We, we give away a lot more than a lot of other people do. And we don't have that kind of budget. FYI. Just throwing yeah. it out there. Uh, got some flack from some dumbass out there so yeah just <laughs> fyi that's what we do nonetheless we're going to talk we're going to move the texas longhorns real quick um to bring in the longhorns talk we're going to talk to rock himself welcome back I, I wish i could play your theme music but i can't play your theme music after all so uh if you smell what the rock is cooking i guess is what we need to say that's me yes sir what's up guys nothing much man it's been forever since you've been back on sweep the league you've been on a hiatus but you've been busy as hell man yeah, man, just busy with life, you know, so just been doing that, but been loving the show, been listening a lot, man. I love what you has the new setup. You know, it's always good to hear analysis from you, uh, Gio and Derek. I love that, especially the NBA analysis, but I'm excited college football's here, so let's get it. College football is here. Shout out to Louis Luna, man. He's up in here right now. Louis, we are coming to you during the day sometimes, so you can catch us as well, uh, but that's uh, La Cocina Taco Truck, man. It's busy up Louis out there, and Apparently we can put ice. Uh, we can put ice in the uh, tacos for you, Gio. So we can send you some tacos. Hey, send me food, Louis. I mean, look, uh, <laughs> I'll spend the money. You know, I'm not a bother a bother like these other two guys on the show, but I could definitely send something your way. Yeah, man, we, we'll take care of it. Appreciate Louis for joining us in here, 100 uh, percent of the time. We're gonna get real quick into 
You know, we're going to be with you here for the next probably uh, 25 minutes or so. We're going to only going to be doing an hour during the days uh, for obvious reasons. But again, the replay will be happening here in just a little bit. Let's bring up the Texas Longhorn schedule because apparently Rock's a Longhorn fan. We're going to have the Rock and Geo, you know, upset at each other all year. So um, bringing up the Longhorn schedule here. Now, I've had the SEC being won by the Texas Longhorns. That's been what a that cupcake schedule. Well, okay, it's a couple weeks ago. That's kind of why I give them, you know, the uh, the edge over everybody else, okay? But nonetheless, man, here's the thing. They're going up against Colorado State. That Michigan game in week two is huge, massive, major, major, major. Because, again, as mentioned earlier in the previous segment, uh, again, this, this segment is brought to you by La Cucina Taco Truck as well. So um, throw that out there. But that game could be massive because of the fact that if they lose to Michigan – that could put Sark on an even hotter seat. He's not on a hot seat yet. I think he's on a semi-warm type of seat right now. But that could put him on a very, very hot seat right there, losing to Michigan Week 2. Obviously, the UTSA game in Week 3, it's a tough game. Don't let it fool you. That's a very tough game. We'll get into UTSA talk uh, in a few few days here. We'll get into UTSA talk. But then uh, Monroe, Mississippi State, Oklahoma, I Doubt we see Texas struggle against Oklahoma, knock on wood, Red River rivalry, but I I see them beating. Then the matchup against Georgia in Austin. That's the main matchup. This is the where they separate the, uh, you know, the men from the boys. Now, I'm not putting, I joke with you all the time. I'm not putting anything past Georgia. Georgia has a great offensive line. They got the best quarterback in the country going into the season, uh, Carson Beck. I, I, I give Georgia a massive respect. It is Texas 1A, Georgia 1B. It's Georgia 1A, Texas 1B. It doesn't matter. They're both, to me, the top two teams in this uh, SEC conference. Then it's Vandy, Florida, Arkansas State, Kentucky, A&M. I don't see Texas losing with the exception of maybe two games at the most. I'm going to go to Rock first because I know Gio's got a lot to say. Going into the season, Rock, Texas. How are we predicting this Texas team? Because you follow Texas a whole lot and you cover them mm-hmm. as well. Um, you know, me being a homer, I would obviously say they would go go undefeated, but that's not realistic. But uh, I have them dropping two games as well. I have them dropping the Georgia game and the Oklahoma game. I, I think, you know, Michigan, it's real lot of questions. Who's going to be the quarterback? How the new coach is going to be um, leading the team? But they still have some studs on offense and defense. But I think the Oklahoma game, it's always a toss up. You never know with the Red River. And then just going to that Georgia game, I mean, it's in Austin. It's going to be an exciting game. Georgia, you know, like you said, they have all the res- all my respect. They're a super solid team. But I think those two are games. But if they somehow squeak past uh, Oklahoma, I think they still lose to Georgia. And then they, Georgia and Texas meet up in the playoff later on. Yeah, it's going to be a playoff matchup between, I think, you know, Georgia and Texas. Geo, the Longhorns. I mean, I know you hate talking good about anybody other than Georgia. Oh, come on, Rudy. Don't say, don't say that about um, me. <laughs> but the Longhorns, I mean, it, it all honesty, man. I, I see possibly two losses here for the Texas. I, I really do. And one of them that I do have scheduled, or not scheduled, but circled is against Georgia. That That's a toss-up. Two of the best teams in the country. That's going to be a toss-up no matter what. I actually have them at another loss. Could be either that Oklahoma game or it could be that A&M game. That's Don't the other that, thing. I know that. both the rivalries, but for whatever reason, you throw out the records when it comes to rivalry. I was games. just about to say that, Rudy. You, exactly. You throw out the records. You know, exactly. when Georgia, Georgia played Auburn last year, that's another big rivalry. It's the, the oldest rivalry in the South. And, um, that was a pretty close matchup against Auburn. So against Oklahoma, rivalry matchups, throw that out. Obviously, they have another rivalry matchup that is being renewed. Uh, it's going to be at Texas A&M. That, that's an interesting game at the end of the season, depending on, obviously, injuries. But listen, I know I joke a lot about Texas, but Quinn Ayers, he's back, right? Yeah. Third year, yeah. Rudy, at the quarterback position. I also like their receivers as well. And Isaiah Bond, Silas Bolden from Oregon State, they have speed. They don't have a lot of glaring weaknesses. You know, they do need to replace uh, some defensive guys and Teron Sweat. And, of course, Byron Murphy, who's now, I believe, in Seattle mm-hmm. uh, with the Seahawks. But Texas, I think they're going to be a really good team. And, look, I won't be surprised if they beat Georgia 
Um, so I'm going to give Texas probably one loss this season. If I'm really just digging through, Michigan is the wild card, Rudy. It is because we very. don't know what to expect. Big Ten football, we we all get it. Ground and power on the football. It's a bit different now. They have a new coach. Harbaugh's gone to uh, the Tartars and Tron Moore. Uh, he is dealing with some stuff, Rudy, with the NCAA and yeah. <laughs> deleted text messages and this and that. That could definitely be a, a distraction. Uh, but for the quarterback position, JJ's gone, right? So yeah. there's going to be a new guy stepping in. Obviously, Blake Quorum's also gone with the Rams. They lost a ton of offensive linemen to the NFL. So Michigan, we could talk about that during the Big Ten show. I don't want to give too much away, but that's a tough matchup at the Big House. Uh, but Texas, they're going to be a good football team. Uh, but I see them one to two losses, uh, like Rock said. That's probably, if they lose anything more, could it be probably because of injuries. But if they have a quarterback injury, Rudy, I'm sure the fans might not mind seeing Archie a little bit early. No. I, that, so this is what I... I I harped on it a whole lot. When Quinn Ewers was said he was going to come back, it kind of ticked me off. I'm not even a Texas fan. I'm a supporter, but I'm a tech, I'm not a Texas fan. It kind of pissed me off because you're going into the SEC. What better way to go into the SEC with an SEC royalty That's and true. just go with Arch Manning? But now you've got to wait an entire year or you've got to wait for a Ewers injury, not wishing it upon him. For Did he do it on purpose, Rudy? What's that? I think a part of him was like, we're going into the SEC. I want to get more love than Archie. I, I know it sounds weird, right? Like, I, I don't know. If, and of course, that probably didn't happen. But for podcast talk, we interested him. He sat back and said, you know what? I think I'm better than him. And I can play much better less next year in the SEC. But what he'll find out is even these bottom teams, they can play. So yeah, they're, they're not scrubs, not. Um, they're not scrubs and I've been joking with Rudy. Don't don't sleep on Vanderbilt now. I think Texas. I don't know if they go there or not, but <laughs> they go to Vanderbilt. No, <laughs> they go to Vanderbilt up, up there in Nashville. Um, they're probably gonna blow them out. But no, Texas. They're gonna be good, man. I, I don't really see much weaknesses. They got a lot of speed. I think they might get in their own way, right? Their head might get. Too big, right? Playing Oklahoma and uh, even Texas and at the end of the season. But one or two losses, they're getting into the playoffs unless a colossal just meltdown during the season. Well, okay, so if they don't make the college football playoffs, is Sark on the hot seat? Not even a hot seat. Is he consi- is it thousand percent? Are there talks in the uh in the back really? in the war room about maybe replacing him? I don't think they're replacing him because I mean they he just took him to the semifinals. But I mean, if they yeah, but if you don't make the, make the college football playoffs, yeah, no, yeah, playoffs. if you don't make the playoffs, there's going to be some talks. But I don't think they would move on so quickly, you know, because they're already building this culture up, and a lot of the players like them. But you know, just adding off to what uh, Gio was saying, I think one of the big questions too is the running back situation. I mean, they just lost the starters or one of their co-starters, C.J. Baxter, and now you have Jaden Blue, who is a fantastic back. But you're going to the SEC, which is more physical, more mm-hmm. faster, more athletic, and let's see how they hold up. But I also wouldn't be surprised if Quinn gets injured. I mean, Quinn has shown to get injured every season. You wouldn't be not would not be surprised if Arch does play some games uh, in the SEC. And what helps Rudy is four offensive linemen returned from last season, as well as Kelvin Banks. So I, I think though the running game is obviously going to be interesting. With some new faces, but I think they'll be fine at that front. I just think the gel. I, I think just playing together. But that Michigan game, Rita, if they if they get destroyed, ugh, man, they're gonna have to get up back from quick because their schedule won't allow them to. And, and that's the, kind of the reason why this is this is kind of the crazy, you know. I guess not conspiracy, but the kind of the crazy thing that I think about was. Scheduling a team like UTSA the week after Michigan was probably not a great idea because you can come out of Ann Arbor because you're going to Ann Arbor. So you can come out of Ann Arbor with a lot of bumps and bruises. You're going to come out. I mean, you're talking about Big Ten football. It's just as physical as SEC football. You're going to come out. You're so hyped for that game. 
do you ex, you know do you expend all your energy for that game come back against a UTSA team who I mean last the, the year that they played them rock correct me if I'm wrong UTSA was up for a little bit and they actually were back and forth with Texas mm-hmm. so oh, yeah I mean they almost, they almost beat them <laughs> I mean yeah so again overlooking you know that UTSA game, I, I don't know. Uh, to me, that was a terrible decision to book UTSA right after Michigan. If anything, I would have taken the, you know, the Louisiana Monroe game after Michigan. <laughs> Not necessarily UTSA. Not saying UTSA is going to upset them, but that that was kind of bad schedule, I think, on Texas's part. Well, they don't care, Rudy. They oh, looked at that and said, "Huh." Hey, we know they, they play up there in, or play down there in San Antonio. Who, what r- really? No, that's probably what they're guessing. Austin. That's probably what they're thinking. Well, they're playing <laughs> in Austin for this game, but again, yeah. you know, Jeff Trailer balled out with his team against Texas, and if he does it again this year, hello. I mean, that's what I said. There's only one team Trailer will leave for, and that's oh. in Austin. Thousand so, percent. Yeah, I know. It, it's, it's all going to come down to Sark. I mean, I think the Texas brass is going to stay real patient with Sark, and I don't think they would can him right away because you're building this culture. And I think going and Sark is building all these pipeline connections with you know you talked about it earlier from the California to the Florida team, uh, talent, and I just don't think they would can Trailer yet. But if Sark has a meltdown, doesn't make the playoffs, and then has another meltdown next season, Trailer is going to be call, uh, going to be getting his name called soon. Tons of money involved. Tons of oh, money for trailer. Money for his third generation of grandkids. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. And, you know, Tim's kind of right. I don't know about Oko and, you know, Aguilin. I think AM's another possible landing start for uh, Jeff Trailer. I think he prefers Austin. Everybody would. They're, but, they're still paying Jimbo. Well, I mean, you're still paying Jimbo, but how, how, how good of it would be to. Be Texas A&M and get a coach like Jeff Trailer. I mean, mm-hmm. it's going to be a Texas team. It's not going to be Texas Tech. It's not going to be Baylor. It's either going to be A&M or it's going to be Texas. Uh, Baylor could be an interesting, no, interesting man. look because there, but I don't. After uh, Art Bryles destroyed <laughs> that program, it's going to be super tough to rebuild that Baylor squad. Super tough, man. There's like, no way. And then Texas Tech, I mean... They're competitive. They're they're okay. I mean, they're they're going to be competitive in the big uh, the Big Twelve. But I don't think he goes to Texas Tech. It's not big enough for Jeff Trailer. I mean, he took a Larry Coker started program, and then he you know they uh, was it David who's the second coach after that? Uh, Charlie Strong. Charlie Strong. Mm, you know, then you've got Trailer who just boom catapult to UTSA. I don't think he wants to go to Texas Tech. The next job is going to be a massive program, Texas. A&M would probably be on the low end for trailer. Well, if it doesn't work out with the ball over there in Alabama in a year sure, or two. Geez. Okay, yeah. That's another team he would definitely I mean, if for. if Bama says, hey, this ain't working. We've lost, I don't know, maybe three or four games each the last two seasons. Could be possible Bama comes calling. Uh, don't think that'll happen, but. You never know these days. The money talks. Yeah. And, I, and just to add to, I think one candidate that could be a, a big name for future head coaching jobs is Oregon's offense coordinator, Will Stein. I mean, Oregon's being predicted to meet in the national championship against Georgia. I've been seeing a lot of, you know, predictions coming as a, and, but their offense is going to be electric. Oh, Dan Landing over there. Uh, <laughs> Will Stein, let's say if Trevor leaves, you know, maybe UTSA throws a bag at him for to be the head coach for Texas. They both what was the be, score of Georgia playing Oregon a few years ago? Do you remember that debacle there? Uh, yeah, I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. I don't think I want to remember that. I guess I'm not even a Georgia or you know Oregon fan. I just what's your them. team? They oh, they play in the Atlantic. What? Atlantic well, yeah, Atlantic. I'm not. I'm not one that has a basketball team and then another football wait, Rudy, team. And a, I wait, support wait, listen, one. College. As a Georgia fan, it took me. It took this team a long time to get here. You know, we used to be chokers, Rudy. And I love Mark Rick. I know all I love, about listen, that. I, Mark Trust Rick me. was a great coach, but he, man, we just could never man, just get is, the big one. Is Mark Rick the Mac Brown, like the younger version? Mm-hmm. Wait, but Mac won a championship though, already. Well, he did, but I mean, Mac was always the one that just could never get it done. Had all the talent in the world and just could never. And I think get Mark it done. was a great 
coach, you know, came over from Florida State. He was under Bobby Bowden there for a while. He was quarterback coach. Um, and Courtney, it was just, man, just, we could always be right there, Rudy, right? Just right there. <laughs> and we'll find a way to lose one to Vanderbilt or to Tennessee or Kentucky. Um, and we couldn't be Bama for a long time until Kirby Smart came. But Mark Rick, he laid that foundation and, um, yeah, it sucks he's not coaching anymore, but mm-hmm. definitely a, a Georgia legend. But yeah, um, yeah, I can't wait for college football. <laughs> well, we're going to have to wait for one more segment. We're going to go to our last commercial break. When we get back, we're going to break down uh, Alabama, mentioned LSU, a couple of those games, and then we're going to get into the team that is the team and the talk of the uh, SEC, that is the Georgia Bulldogs. When we get back here, we're going to end the segment here for Sweep the League again. This will be pre... This will be... Uh, we played again and broadcasted at 9 p.m. tonight. It's normal time. It's the Rock. It's Coach Joe's Ready Conference Junior. We'll be back. Enjoying Sweep the League TV? Don't keep it to yourself. Share with friends and let them join the fun. Spurs fans, are you ready? Stay ahead of the game of the San Antonio Spurs with the best coverage in the business. Tune in to Locked on Spurs, the daily podcast that brings you expert analysis, exclusive interviews, and all the latest news and updates for your silver and black. Join Jeff Garcia, the most informative and entertaining host in the game, as he breaks down all Spurs news and notes, interviews the biggest names, and keeps you locked into all things Spurs. From Monday to Friday, get ready to start your day with the best Spurs coverage in the business. Don't miss out on the expert opinions, the hot takes, and the can't miss guests. Make sure you're locked in with Locked On Spurs. Subscribe to their YouTube channel now and stay ahead of the game all season long. Locked On Spurs. It's the best Spurs coverage in the business. Don't miss out. Hey there, sports fans. I'm Ashley, your go-to girl for all things sports here on Sweep the League. Welcome to our daily news reports where we'll be covering the latest updates from the NFL, NBA, WNBA, college sports, and more. We're thrilled to be a part of the rapidly growing Sweep the League network, bringing you fast and fresh news updates every day. Make sure to subscribe to Sweep the League TV on YouTube for even more in-depth analysis and discussions with our amazing team Monday through Friday. Huge thank you to our incredible sponsors in San Antonio for their support. We couldn't do it without you. So let's get started. I'm Ashley, and I'll be sweeping the league for you every day. Stay tuned for the latest sports news and updates. Howdy from Texas. You've got to be tired of the sizzling electric bills in the Texas heat, right? Well, partner, we've got the solution for you. Introducing Castro and Sun Solar, harnessing the power of the sun to save you some serious cash. Their top-notch solar panels will have you soaking up the savings in no time. Imagine lower electric bills, a reduced carbon footprint, and the satisfaction of going green. Their expert team will take care of everything from installation to maintenance. We're talking hassle-free, worry-free, and stress-free solar solutions. So why wait? Join the solar revolution with Castro and Sun Solar. Let the Texas sun shine bright and your savings shine even brighter. Castro and Sun Solar, empowering your home one sunbeam at a time. Call in today, and let's get this solar party started. All right, welcome back to Sweep the League. Coach Gio, The Rock, uh, Rudy Compos Jr. Again, we will be broadcasting it again at 9 p.m. tonight, the SEC breakdown uh, here on Sweep the League. So, again... Real quick shout out. You're going to probably leave a lot of comments. You're probably going to do a lot of stuff. Again, we're not going to be able to see them till uh, the very next day. So it's, uh, we don't answer. It's not that we're ignoring or not showing comments. It's just, we're not live at the time. It's just being a rebroadcast. So it's a whole schedule change for everybody uh, here at Sweep the League. So nonetheless, I appreciate everybody joining in. We're at over 730 plus strong on the stream right now. Appreciate everybody joining us in. This last segment is brought to you. Uh, by La Cocina Taco Truck, MCS General Contracting, Cash Rose and Solar Specialty, T, and Lockdown Spurs as well. Shout out to Jeff Garcia. I was on today's episode of Lockdown Spurs. Go check it out as to why Keldon Johnson won't give up. 
his number three to Chris Paul. We'll get into more talk on that when we have Derek on the show. So I know Joe, the IRO, I have the IRO as well. Just give him the number, man. Show some respect, okay. man. Screw that. If you don't want to give up your number, don't give up your number. I don't care who it is. Rudy. Pay for it. If you don't like it, pay for it. I think it. Keldon's a good player. But dude, Keldon's a good player, but you shouldn't have to give up your number. Who cares? It's CP3, though. Come on, Rudy. Come on, I Rudy. I, I felt I like. care if it's CP3. It didn't matter. Give him some respect. Say, hey, you know what? I, I, I'm going to give you your number. This is your number. You've played, what, almost his entire career, if I'm not mistaken. It could be wrong, but. Um, yeah, but if that number means something to you, it has personal deep meaning. Why the hell are you going to give it up? What does mean? Because, what does it going to have? Well, so it, from what I understand, and we talked about it on on the show, was the fact that the number three represents his family. He's the third born child in the family, and uh, so it has personal meaning to him. Who cares about it? I don't care. If CP three came to me and said, "I would like to be number three, you know, you might give it up. First words out of my mouth are, "How much? How much is it worth to you?" I, I'm just gonna keep my comments to myself. Why? Say what you want to say. Nah, this is I'm your good. show. We'll, we'll, we'll stick on college football. Listen, I think Collins is a fantastic player. I just feel like, look. Oh, he's no all star. He's CP three. <laughs> I mean, he's a legend, Hall of Famer. Okay. Hey, you know what? Here's number three. You know it's probably going to happen. I like, get I'm the significance. Start. I get it. I'm not here to to say anything about that. All, all I'm saying is, you're on your way out the door anyway. Wow. I knew Apparently, but I don't know what's going to happen now with that whole situation. Are they keeping him? Because if he gets traded, then he gets the number anyway. So I don't know. Kelly, it, it doesn't matter. He's going to get moved, right, Rudy? I mean, uh, if he is, it's going to be at the trade deadline. That's all yeah. I can say. Yeah. Let's break down LSU real quick here. More SEC talk. So uh, real quick of the LSU schedule. Again, we are bringing down the SEC at the end of the show here. We got about another less than 10 minutes, I think, for here. Um, They're starting off with USC. I'm pretty sure, to me, that's a big game. But I think LSU still comes out on top over USC. They they go to Nichols, South Carolina, UCLA, South Alabama, Ole Miss, Arkansas, A&M, Alabama, Florida, Vanderbilt, Oklahoma. LSU... Lost a lot. Malik Neighbors, uh, Jaden Daniels, they've lost on the offseason, but they didn't necessarily didn't lose out on everything because they are still a very talented team coming back. Probably one, other than Alabama, probably another top offensive line for LSU. So on paper, LSU looks good. They're really, really good. It's the addition. It's, you know, Losing players, having new players step up, that is the question. Looking at their schedule, I don't see very many losses for LSU, in my opinion. I see them losing to Alabama, but again, Alabama's a team. It's a kind of a rivalry type of thing, so that you throw the records out the window. But outside of that, I maybe see them losing to Ole Miss, possibly. Um, could they have a hiccup against Oklahoma? Maybe, but... No more than three losses I have for LSU. That's just my opinion. It's tough, Rudy. They lost a lot. I mean, they they lost <laughs> neighbors and Daniels, uh, a, a tandem that was phenomenal last season. Their defense did give up a lot of points. Uh, I think around what th- close to thirty five points 35. a game on defense. So they they need to to improve, and that was mostly an SEC play. Uh, the big thing f- is a quarterback position. That to me is 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 what's going to make or break this team. And I think the quarterback is Garrett Newsimer. Yeah, Newsimer. Newsimer. So he he he's he's a rising player, right? They got speed. Listen, LSU is always going to have speed. We've seen the receivers, right? Yeah. But yeah, that offense is replacing a lot of guys, and I don't know. I got to see more. But because of Brian Kelly, they've won 10 games in back-to-back seasons. He can coach. You know, we saw him at Notre Dame. We were like, well, you know, Notre Dame's independent. They're scheduling cupcakes. Now he's been in the SEC and they've done pretty well back-to-back years. But they got a lot they got to replace. Their defense needs to improve. I'm gonna go with Rudy, though. I, I think three to four losses, that's what I'm looking at this season. I think they're going to have a hiccup, whether that's Oklahoma, whether that's uh, South Carolina. I just think they're bound to have hiccups. 
the Florida game. Look, I don't know what Florida's team going to look like, Rudy, at that time. <laughs> maybe Florida shambles adds on, and they they shocked the world and beat them. I'm going to give them three or four losses. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. To me, the quarterback position and the defense. The defense does have a new defensive coordinator. The offense also has a new offensive coordinator as well as Mike DeBurk went to Notre Dame. So yeah. there's some, a lot of moving parts uh, for LSU, but I think they're going to miss the playoffs. Definitely make a bowl game, be respectable. Uh, oh, but yeah. Frank Kelly, he's, he can coach them up, and I would be surprised if they get 10 wins. If there's ever a team that does squeak into the college football playoffs, it's going to be LSU, I think. I, I think they are, but they're going to need to go. I, I think they're going to need to have – a two loss record. Yeah, to get into I the just playoffs. I think they're going to have a hiccup. I'm telling you, South Carolina, they always play somebody tough. Yeah, and Oklahoma. I know we. I, I've been laughing at them. Um, they're just such Oklahoma a this dark year? horse. Yeah, they play Oklahoma yeah. at the very yeah. end. Uh, sorry, no. I have to check. Yeah, they play Oklahoma I, at the very end. So I mean, um, Arkansas with Sam Pittman, whatever's left of that team, I, I think he's getting fired. Um, and USC, Rudy, I know you don't love USC and uh, old Caleb Williams. I, all I'm him. saying is Caleb. I don't want to bring Barrett up, but no, we save that for the NFL talk. He can play. Bring, That's all I'm going to say. Okay, Red against Rock. against <laughs> second and third stringers. Yeah, he can definitely play against <laughs> second and third stringers. That's for damn sure. Derek Gervin, hey man, we miss you too. And he said he missed the number three talk. We're saving the number three talk for when you get back on, Derek. So definitely, uh, we'll talk about yeah. that uh, when you get back on. But now we're going to move over to Alabama, who I think if there's one team that I feel that could win the SEC and actually has a shot at winning the SEC over Georgia and Texas, it is Alabama. You know, real quick, the schedule on that. So we can move on to Georgia's Western Kentucky, South Florida, Wisconsin. Then it's at Georgia or versus Georgia, Vanderbilt, South Carolina, Tennessee, Missouri, LSU, Mercer, Oklahoma, Mercer. Auburn. Yeah. They play Mercer on the 16th of November. So this is my thing, Gio. When I look at the schedule, I'm worried about two games. Obviously, Georgia, and I'm worried about LSU. I see a one-loss Bama team right here, and I think that's to Georgia. And that's that's me putting it very, very, very what? nice. What does Georgia have a schedule like this? Western you're not, Kentucky? You're not, you're not scared against Mizzou, Rudy? It really keeps disrespecting Mizzou, and I keep telling them about them boys there. I they play. They got the starting quarterback and like arguably the best receiver in the nation. I don't know, man. Rudy's not drinking the Kool Aid, Rock. I'm, I'm not drinking the Kool Aid. I've been telling him about. Man. We talked about Missouri earlier. That Brady Cook, I'm, he can play. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, I mean, no, no, I'm not saying he can't play. And again, I'm. I am, I will. Lie, I'm not gonna lie. I am sleeping on Missouri this year. I just don't buy the hype. That's just me. I think, like I said, the SEC is just too top heavy this year. I just don't. I have Missouri that fifth, sixth, seventh range right there. I mean, I, I don't have them. I don't have them in the top three. There's no doubt about that. So mm -hmm. if they're not going to be in the top three, then I can't talk about them being in the college football playoffs. If I don't have them in the top four. I mean, they're to me, they're not going to sneak in. So that's why yeah. I'm not high on um, Missouri just going in right now, man. That, that's just me. No, I agree with you. I, and I always give a uh, uh, crap to one of my good friends, Amanda. She's a Mizzou alum, and I always tell her Mizzou's not going to go do anything. But I think Mizzou will do good still. I mean, it'll be a solid a Disrespect, team. Rock. You're giving Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, again, Missouri, I, I just don't buy a lot of into it. But, I mean, if you're looking at Alabama, Gio, I, I see one loss, mm -hmm. but that one loss is to Georgia, and that could be a make it or break it. And you know what? That one loss may put them second in the division. I mean, listen, it's at home. We know Georgia historically, at least when the last – 20 years have not feared well. Now, Georgia has beaten them, of course, in the national championship game, but – just last season, Alabama again beat Georgia. So, uh, but Nick Saban's not there anymore. We'll see. But really, this schedule, I mean, that, yeah, so was... to Tim's uh, point, Tennessee is going to be a tough one. That's yeah, a game think... at Tennessee. It's going to be loud. You know, they won that whole rear and shoot offense there with those wide splits. I, I think they got a good shot, man. I, I like Tennessee to potentially pull the upset. 
But Rudy, you're probably right on that one loss, but that stretch of Tennessee, Missouri, and LSU, that's probably going to make a break Alabama season. So are you giving them one loss only? I'm going to go with two losses on the season. Which ones are you at? Georgia and... <laughs> Georgia, and I'm going to go with Tennessee. So you're going with Tennessee. If I give them two losses, I'm doing Georgia and LSU. Those are the two losses that I... Yeah, I, I don't kill you for LSU. And Oklahoma, hey, don't... That's a random game on November 23rd. It's so funny because we keep bringing up Oklahoma, and it's like... <laughs> uh -oh. I, I, I don't know what that... Listen... <laughs> The Big 12, no disrespect. I know they, they play a different brand up there, but the brand is no defense in some cases. Not all the teams there. Mm -hmm. But Oklahoma, I uh, I really want them, and and not to just move over to them real quick, but that's a, such a wild card team. I don't know really mm -hmm. how well they're going to do because this could be a team that wins four or five games, and then they can win over nine games. <sighs> They got a new I quarterback coming in, man. I mean, they have a new, brand new quarterback. Isn't it that's, and that's my reservation, too. No, no, it's Jackson Arnold. Oh, he's he's dead. Say. Yeah, General Booty transferred, actually. He did, right? I was going to say, I couldn't remember yeah. if he had transferred or not. Well, nonetheless, I mean, out of the top three teams in the SEC, Bama, Georgia, and Texas, safe to say Bama probably has the easiest schedule of the three. Yeah. There's got to be no Because it's, it's kind of spread out. It, it does get... Top heavy at the end of the season, but Alabama and Jalen Morrow, uh, he has the potential. I'm not saying he's going to win the Heisman, Rudy, but mm -hmm. to get that offense rolling. And they got Georgia at home, right? Their toughest matchup is Georgia at home in Tuscaloosa, yeah. uh, which I might make that game. I don't know yet. Uh, I don't <laughs> really feel like being having beer on my face because those, those Bama fans are crazy, so... They are, man. Uh, so, real, real quick, man. I don't mean to cut you off, but real quick, I want to go to Missouri. I did look at their schedule before we go to Georgia and close out the show. Missouri schedule. Uh, okay. If I'm looking at their schedule, then I can say, okay, they probably are going to be a better team based off of their schedule. <laughs> Murray State, Buffalo, Boston College, Vanderbilt. Even though you say Vanderbilt is, you know, a tough out for them, I still think they get it done at home. <laughs> Texas A&M, UMass, Auburn, Bama, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Mississippi State, Arkansas. I, I mean, that's so easy, man. They can Auburn, run. Auburn and Bama are probably the back to back that I look at. That's like tough. But I mean, again, then you're looking at two losses, maybe at the most for Missouri. That's, but again, it's not good enough in the SEC with the top loaded guys. That's yeah. That, that's going to be the thing is. Will two losses get you in? Because I think SEC at most can get four teams. I don't think yeah. the committee would would flat out put five or six teams. No, then dude, to, no. To my point, a few weeks ago, it's going to be the SEC invitation because you still have the Big Ten, obviously mm -hmm. the Big Twelve, and some other conferences. And look, you have your TSA, right? Rudy, we talked about earlier. Can Working they run the show? Memphis is the darling of a team who might get in with yeah. how their schedule is. Um, but look, I want to give love to Auburn as well. Kentucky, look, those teams are all going to battle it out. I know we won't have enough time to talk about those teams, but add Vanderbilt in there, as I've talked about. I think Vader's is going to shock one team this year. I don't know who it is. Uh, but shout out to those teams. They're all there, but they're not there yet. So, uh, you know, the thing is, we, we talk about UTSA, and we talk about them, you know, quite a bit. Um and again, when we get to that conference, we're going to talk because I think even Rock was mentioning that Texas State, and I did see that Texas State apparently has an opportunity to make the they college football playoffs. They got a lot of speed. They, and that's the thing is there's going to be one of these, and they're not mid-majors. I hate calling them mid-majors, but there's <laughs> going to be one of these teams from you know an outside power conference that's going to make it. I've got UTSA doing it. A lot of people have Memphis. Texas State's another one. We're going to get into a lot of that talk here later on during the week. We're going to break down Georgia real quick, then we're going to end the show here. So Georgia real quick. They start off at Clemson. Uh, they got Tennessee Tech, Kentucky, Bama, Auburn, Mississippi State, Texas, Florida, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Massachusetts, Georgia. This is the brutal schedule of any team in the SEC. I have no doubt in my mind. Besides Florida. Well, besides Florida, yeah. But remember, Gio, it's played at a neutral uh, location. You're not getting a home field advantage, nothing like that. So, again, we don't know what Florida is going to look like later on in the season. 
You're and talking it's a neutral what, site because of the games freaking in? Gators. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're talking mm-hmm. seven games into the season. If Florida has a turnaround, if you're if I'm looking at the schedule, Gio, schedule. <laughs> if I'm looking at the schedule without you getting pissed off, if I'm looking at the schedule and I'm being realistic here, I've got them at maybe two losses, ideally. But if I really put my thinking hat on, I can possibly see three losses. I don't want to say four, but three losses is what I would put my thinking hat on. I see two, maybe. I also see them maybe going one loss only, but three losses for me, if I'm a betting man and they put it at three, uh, I, I would be so reluctant to take that because it's it's so mm-hmm. tough. It's so tough, man. Yeah, it's... Uh... Look, Clemson, uh, that's a neutral site in Atlanta. But dabble in them, I, I'm sure they'll be ready. But I'm not lying. Really. This is a tough schedule. Think about sure. this. They, they go to Alabama, and then they're at home against Auburn, another big rival game. Mississippi State, we don't have South Carolina, who seems to be a, a thorn every so often, but they're at Texas, then Florida, right? Does yeah. Georgia lick their wounds from playing at Texas? And then they got... A, a kind of a semi big rivalry game in Florida the next week. And then they got Ole Miss and then Tennessee. They get random Massachusetts. And then look, Georgia Tech played Georgia pretty good last season. There's a lot of moving parts. Georgia Tech is not the same from the last several seasons. They have much improved. Remember, Rudy, they beat Miami last year. The Hurricanes decided not to go for a knee. Georgia Tech ends up winning I, the game, coming back. So Georgia Tech is no that. pushover. <laughs> One of the biggest bonehead players I've ever. So seen I'm not listen. Two to three losses. I'm honestly, it's it's very possible. I got to see how this team matures throughout the season because every season is different, right? Every team is different. I like Carson Beck a lot. You know, we talked about last year, Rudy. We wasn't sure what this is going to look like. The running game should be good. Offensive line. Uh, they got to keep guys healthy because it is going to be a war of nutrition throughout the season because Bama, Auburn, Mississippi, Texas. Yeah. It's just, why do they give us this schedule? But Alabama gets to play like five cupcakes. I don't know. <laughs> it is. You know, that's the thing. I mean, Bama's schedule of the three is definitely the one that, I mean. It's and easy. Ole Miss, Rudy, is another team. Ole Miss has a, a their schedule is not very difficult as all we talked about earlier. They can also run the show as well. It is, and that's the thing with the SEC is like you've got a lot of teams that you can run the, you can run the table with a lot of these teams, and it's very possible to. But will they actually do it, man? That's the thing. I think Georgia, out of majority of the teams in the SEC, I think Georgia's is the hardest. It obviously is the hardest to run, but nonetheless. Give me your final college football playoff predictions. Which teams get in? Which one do you have on the outside, Gio? I'm, I'm still going with Georgia. I know we just talked about the schedule, and it is tough. Uh, I'm going to be on the edge of my seat. seem like every week I, I won't have a, a day off. Um, I'm going with Georgia, Texas, and the third team, I'm going to go with Ole Miss. I got three teams coming out of the SEC. I think Mizzou will be that fourth team just barely. Tennessee's interesting, but I just don't trust them enough. So give me those three teams, Georgia, Texas, and Ole Miss. Oh, I forgot Al- uh, Alabama. So yeah. I'll go with four then. So you got four going in. Okay. Yeah. Rock, which ones do you got? The same thing, and I really think um, old, uh, Mizzou, like Gio says, could be left out. Tennessee, I don't trust because they're going to be running with a new quarterback. You know, young guy, five-star, and Paid a lot of money, but it's gonna be with Nico. I don't know how to say his last name. It's like yeah, you um, But uh, I, I think same way. But I think the fourth team is gonna be Texas. They barely squeak in. I think Texas will be like a, a ten or eleven seed. I mean, it's just so tough, and especially Damn, Georgia. The Texas there. fan making it that now. <laughs> yeah, especially I mean, because Bama, like Gio and you said, like they have an easy schedule, so they'll be up there. If Georgia is able to go through this gauntlet, they'll be up there. And I'm always scared of Ole Miss. I mean, you have Jackson Dart, Lane Kiffin, a lot of solid players. So, well, Rudy, the thing is, if if Georgia makes the playoffs, what do they have left in the tank after that season? They still got to play in the SEC title game, which yeah. 
may not mean as maybe much anymore, but still big game. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. For me, uh, final prediction for me going into the uh, college football season, SEC, I have Texas one. <sighs> this is tough for me. I'm going to stick with it. Texas one, Georgia two, Bama three. And I've got them three going into the college football playoffs. I don't see a fourth team. I think one gets left out being it'd be Ole Miss or, you know, somebody out there that gets left out. I do think those three get in. I think a fourth gets left out. I, I think we're going to see, we're going to see a surprise in the big 12. I think they're going to get an extra team in than what we're thinking. So Colorado, uh, no, definitely not Colorado <laughs> at all, but Utah. Those, are, those are our final predictions for the sec. Appreciate everybody joining us on today. We are over 600 people. Live on the stream. Appreciate that. Everybody's support. Go to the YouTube page. You just go to YouTube, search at Sweep the Lake TV. Be a subscriber. We're going to be giving away a whole lot more stuff. The only way for you to win is to be a subscriber. Uh, we're going to come to you again this week as well. Tomorrow should be uh, a live, our live show tomorrow should be at nine o'clock. So uh, we should be back live tomorrow. But again, this will be replayed again, rebroadcast at nine o'clock tonight on our YouTube page. So for Coach Geo for The Rock, for Derek Irwin, he should be back tomorrow. It is Rudy Campos Jr. until we sweep the again. We'll see you later, guys.